Hey there. Just gonna get this going for a few minutes. How are you guys doing? Gonna check a few things over here real quick. So just enjoy the music for a moment. Looks like I'm on. All right, guys. <clears throat> I'm gonna wait and make sure I see somebody come on and um, make a comment when you do. All right. Hey, Kayla. Good to see you. I'm going to turn this down and jump right in. Sorry, I am a few minutes late here. Uh, I'm going to blame it on my computer clock. <laughs> I looked for it at once. Hey, Gina, how are you? And it said, what did it say? 15 till. And I thought, gosh, I thought it was later than that. <laughs> and I looked again, I mean, like three minutes later, and then it, it updated. Hey, um, so I'm not even going to worry about that right now the computer and jump right in so today what are we talking about chapter seven hey Alice I am so excited guys I'm so excited that you're still here and that you're doing it I mean chapter seven after we get through chapter seven well let's say after we get through chapter eight that's a third of the way through so that is impressive um, I just, the more I just thumb through this book and look at it, I'm just like, you know, it, it is all here. Like everything we need to, to do a basic, you know, how do we do this whole thing? It's, it's all in this book. Yes, there's a ton of other books out there that are great and, you know, read them. But this is the nuts and bolts and just, you know, if you want to get someone started, this is the book. I'm, I'm excited about it still. <laughs> so anyway, for anybody that is just now coming on, you haven't seen any of the other videos, we are on chapter seven in this book, Game Plan, the complete strategy guide to go from starter kit to silver. And um, you certainly can join us now. Yes, nuggets abound, Alice. <laughs> um, but really you want to go back to chapter one probably and just start working through it and there's nothing about being late or you know starting late or anything like that just start when you can start you know just <clears throat> just do it there's a workbook too and so you really want to have both i have them local to sell to anybody that wants to set or if you're not local just get them on amazon so um fantastic books and then what you do is you watch video one then you read chapter one then you do the workbook chapter one and then I recommend that you go watch Sarah's videos too. Sarah Harnish, the author at oilabilityteam.com. And she's got um, all of her. She did the whole boot camp. It's 25 chapters. She did it all in January of this year. So you can watch those too. You know, the more the merrier. I, I've got her on Audible too. I, this book is on Audible too. So, you know, the more you just kind of get that stuff in your head, whether it's through audio, through video, through reading the book, you know, then it just becomes second nature. And so when you're talking to other people, you're just like, oh yeah, this, that, the other. <laughs> okay, so today we're gonna to talk about what you do and do not need to share the oil successfully. Um, you, and you don't need to be an expert, I hope. Uh, we're gonna talk about MLMs in general. We're gonna talk about purity and integrity. And that's some of the stuff that's not in the book. Um, but it was in her video and she has some good stuff on that. And we're going to talk about sales, which we're not doing. We're not selling guys, we're educating. And we're going to talk about using the knowledge of other experts. So uh, let's see. The oil, that's the oil of the day, is Ula Grow. And uh, Sarah has a really funny story about this when she was an executive. She was on a Young Living cruise. She, she won a cruise. And so she goes on that Young Living cruise and she's like, you know, she's an interviewer. That's, that's her job as a radio anchor. And 
she goes on that cruise and she's wanting to interview people and she starts, she's like awkwardly getting herself into situations, people she doesn't know. And like for four days, she just didn't make any friends. And then finally she goes back to room, has a pity party. Her kids are making tons of friends. And she just, I don't know, she was drawn to this oil. She gets this oil out, she puts it on, she prays, and then she goes back out on the cruise ship and just immediately gets into the hot tub with a bunch of lemon droppers. And they like take her under her, their wing. And then they're like, oh, didn't you want to interview David Stewart? There he is. Oh, didn't you want to interview um, you know, Adam Green? There he is. And then just one thing after another, like all within an hour. So she loves the oil, Ula Grow, and it is. Hmm, it's very nice. All right, so um, let's talk about MLMs. Purchasing, and, and, and we're talking about this because when you come across people that are anti-MLM, and oh, I'm not gonna get involved in that, you know, it's like, I don't like that kind of thing. Well, I've been there, <laughs> I've truly been there. I told this story, I'm gonna tell it again real quick. Um, earlier, but my only, I've never been in an MLM, and my only other experience with one was when I lived in Los Angeles. This was probably, I don't know, when was it? The early 90s, and I lived in Hollywood, you know, closer to the beach area, and um, somebody, and I, I wish I could remember who, but I don't remember who it was, that talked me into driving two hours in LA traffic after I got off work east inland to some motel, wasn't even a hotel, it was a motel, to a meeting and she wouldn't, he, she, I don't even remember who it was, wouldn't tell me what it was, very secretive, and I'm, but, but it could change your life, you know, all that kind of stuff. And finally I succumbed and she didn't even go or he, whoever it was, didn't, wasn't even able to go. They just got me to go. And so I'm driving out there and I'm like, what is this? And I get there and I get into this stuffy, small, tightly packed room. And I'm sitting at the back with my arms folded going, what in the world and what am I doing here? And I can't believe I went through that traffic. And there's a guy at the front. He's in a real tight suit. It's, it was like a stereotypical scene. The guy talked for an hour. He's sweating the whole time. And finally, at the end of the hour, he tells what what the company was and I'm not going to tell you what the name of the company was you might be able to guess but I was like that was like I, I walked out I didn't do it and I just was irritated and that was my the taste in my mouth ever since about MLMs so I've changed I still don't like the stigma that it can sometimes have but you know what I'm gonna be part of the solution I'm not gonna be part of the problem and I don't even think about it that way. I don't talk about it like there's a stigma. I just talk about it like there isn't and there never was. <laughs> so I'm just always like, oh, well, okay, well, you know, and talk about it. What's going on when you're, when you're in an MLM and when you purchase from an MLM, you're, it's just like a small business. It's just like going down to your friend's store at, at the local downtown square, you know, versus um, a big chain where you're supporting the CEO, maybe a board of directors that live, you know, in a whole nother state, a whole nother town. And so it is, it is the epitome of a small business. It just doesn't have brick and mortar. You know, you're doing it out of your home. And my gosh, that's so common now that we have the internet and online and everything like that. Um, so then you've got people that are going to think it's a pyramid scheme. <laughs> and have you guys watched the little video about pyramid schemes? I put it on the grow group. It's so funny. It's like three or four minutes and it's so funny and it's so informative. It really explains, it really gives you the arguments that people will have. And usually when people have those arguments, they don't know what they're talking about. They don't, they don't really understand MLMs and that they're not a pyramid scheme. So that just becomes part of education. Um, and then the whole thing about pyramid scheme and, and 1978, the federal government sued Amway um, because they thought they were a pyramid scheme, but Amway won. And a pyramid scheme is something that it is, it, there's no product. There's, nobody's getting a product in the mail, in their home. There's no product. And I will tell you, I was involved in a pyramid scheme when I was in college. And I got, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know it was illegal. All I was told, it was just money changing hands. 
and we were supposed to put $1,500 where I came up with that. You know what? It was right after I got out of college. So I was working. Uh, I don't know where I came up with that much money, but we put, you were supposed to put $1,500 in and then everybody just put that in. Then you moved up the pyramid and then you, you got a bunch of money. <laughs> well, it never worked and it was illegal. That's a pyramid scheme. Um, so the goal of the MLM is to take the middleman out. It's, it's to take, you know, brick and mortar stores, just the middleman out and put all that money into the distributor's hands as the person who is by word of mouth getting the message out about the product. And so instead of, you know, there's no huge advertising budget for YL. I mean, there's some, but not like companies that are spending, you know, millions on television advertising or radio or print, all that. No, it's us. And so that money is going into our hands. So that's really cool. Um, okay. So th another thing that finally, because because when I first started with Young Living, I was like, oh, when I found out it was the MLM, oh, you know, eek. But I want these. <laughs> I wanted them, so I didn't care. I was just, and, and at that point, I was just buying them for myself. I wasn't out there talking to other people. Hi, Sherry. And so, you know, it wasn't that big a deal. But then when I did decide to um, teach classes and that kind of thing, it was right after I found that Dave Ramsey, Donald Trump, Warren Buffett, Warren, Buff Warren Buffett's protege, Phil Town, all, Robert Kiyosaki, he's famous, wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I mean, all of those men, like they're the top business people in our country, investors, you know, successful. They all think network marketing is a fantastic business model. I mean, how do we argue with that? So when I saw that, and I'd read Phil Town's book and Robert Kiyosaki's book before that, because my husband was into him. And so we talked about those people and just different ideas that they had, not MLMs, but other ideas. And so that really just kind of pushed me over the edge to be like, okay, enough of this, like being weird about an MLM. So, um, it is, then there, there's also the thinking that it's a get rich quick scheme. And, um, well, it's not, <laughs> you know, you guys know, you know, it, t it takes some work. I mean, it really does, but it's possible to get to diamond quick. I mean, we've seen people do it. And again, you know, I go back to, you got to look at your lifestyle. You got to look at what you want and then decide what you want. But there are people that have gotten there quick. So they work their tail off to do that. They definitely did. So it's, it's not a get rich quick scheme. Well, that isn't going to really work. So there you go. Um, there's also the argument that you have to start, you have to be in the MLM from the beginning to make it to the top and to really do well. And you'll see a lot of new MLMs um, coming about, you know, and you'll see, oh, people got in at that very beginning stage and, and they use that to um, try to get people into that MLM. and that may be true, but MLMs will fold. The, the MLMs that fold will usually fold seven years or sooner from the time they've been started. So the negative to starting with a new MLM is there, there's no foundation. There is no um, longevity, you know, no telling what's going to happen with that MLM. And, um, but then you look at Young Living, they've been around for 22 years. They're a billion dollar company now. That is some serious longevity. And so, and, and so you're seeing people, I mean, Sarah Harnish hit diamond in February. People are getting to the top. So that is a myth that you have to start when, when a company is just starting to really get to the top. I mean, yeah, Marcella Von Harding, you know, she's um, way up there at the top and she and Mary Young were friends before Mary met Gary. <laughs> so, so sure, she's doing great, but that doesn't mean other people can either. So, and we've seen it, you know, we see it all around us uh, just in our own upline. Okay, so, so another reason that, that p picking Young Living in particular is a good thing is because it's a consumable product. So, you know, when you talk to somebody who's considering a business, um, 
You want something that's consumable. You want something that people need every month. You know, I don't need to go buy pots and pans. I'm, I mean, my gosh, I buy pots and pans and I keep them for years, you know, or makeup is gonna last for quite a while. Um, but you're, you're looking at Young Living and you're looking at things that people need every month once they get into that lifestyle, that chemical free thing. And so that's what you really want is something consumable. Um, and, and then helping these people develop that lifestyle. One of Sarah's favorite books, and when I heard her say it a month ago or so, I of course ordered it. <laughs> and um, she loves to recommend this book to people that just for learning new things, and that is Jen O'Sullivan's French Aromatherapy. And it is a really nice book. There's like 300 recipes in here, and, and it's not just food recipes, it's you know all kinds of diffuser rep, re, uh, recipes and um, stuff for hair and chemical free home stuff. So, and then she teaches a lot about blending and layering and um, about the molecules spinning and getting into the DNA just right. And so, I really like this. I have just perused it, you know, surfacely, so I have not really delved deep in it, but it looks really good from what I can tell. And so, when I got that, I went ahead and got her other one which is the essential oil truth, the facts without the hype. So, um, and there she is. You guys may see her videos. She has a um, group that anybody can be in on Facebook, a private group. And guys, what is it? Um, what's the name of her group? Do you, does anybody know? If you do, would you put it on there? I, I'm not remembering all of a sudden. But she has tons of videos, very, um, educational in, in all the stuff she does. I really like her. So check her out. Um, so a couple of resources to send people to are seedtheseal.com. That is just a um, website, a Young Living website um, that uh, explains, you know, the groundwork and um, just the, the whole seed to seal, seed, planting the seed, harvest, distillation, um, bottling and the whole the whole process of how it works and how incredible incredible it is and and I think it talks um, well I'm not sure but when you just start getting into Gary Young's story and of course I'm going to refer to this book again you know this is twenty five dollars it's on the Young Living website you know it's full of pictures so it's an easy read um, but this is really going to let you know you know, just what Gary Young did, how he got to where he is. Um, thank you, Sherry, the human body and essential oils. Yeah, that's the Facebook group. So s search that and, and um, join that. But, um, you know, just bringing, studying with the greats in France and bringing that information, that knowledge, those distillation methods um, back. Well, actually he, he just perfected those distillation methods and now that's what's used all over the world. It's copied. So, um, so that's good. Um, and that, and that would be, you know, another resource is that D. Gary Young, the world leader in essential oils is the name of that book. Um, but when you start looking at what he did, you know, he's sneaking seeds in his boots home from France. You know, you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> and that was back in the eighties from France to, um, where he lived up in the Northwest to plant his first lavender fields. And, you know, he's sleeping on cement floors in the distillation um, rooms in France where he's learning and, and just listening to those stories, reading about those stories. You know, he's trudging through the Amazon forest, cutting things down and looking for aromatic plants to study. You know, he's getting shot at in Oman because, you know, they're in this, in these very, you know, terrorist ridden countries. And, but he's searching, you know, that is just his life's mission. Um, Yes, pioneer spirit to the core, just just amazing. He's, he, his whole story is just about bravery and courage. And, you know, he's, he's kind of like, I always think of Indiana Jones. <laughs> but, you know, he, it's, it's incredible. And so, you know, a lot of times people, I think, that, oh, it's like a cult or something. It's like, it's not a cult. You know, you got to just, you read about this guy, but then you go to the farms and you go on any of these silver gold trips, you know, he's right there. You're gonna be shaking hands with him. He's gonna be talking to this intimate group of people and it's just spellbinding. 
you know, and that's just his life. He doesn't, he's not some millionaire CEO guy. It, it, that's not him at all. He's a rancher and a farmer and, and he has a passion and a mission to get oils into all the houses in the world. And so, ah, okay. Um, so, you know, Young Living has the largest oil, essential oils farms in the world. Um, they distill at the right temperatures, at the peak of harvest, there's no chemicals, they hand weed everything, there's integrity in the process. So these are things you wanna know about. Um, so as you're talking to people, you know, and you're talking about the purity versus something that you're gonna get it, even Whole Foods, you know, it's just not the same. Um, there are 85 single oils and 91 blends. Now that's what I counted in the um, product guide. I don't know if there's been any more that we've developed, but something around that, 176 altogether, that he has developed by trudging through forest and just all over the world, all over the world. Um, I mean, not to mention the Ningxia Red when he found the you know, longest living healthy people in Ningxia, China, and that whole story. If you have your big EODR, read the story of Ningxia Red in there. <clears throat> if you don't have that, you should get it because <laughs> it's, it's got a lot more stuff than just the little one. Um, but anyway, um, it's what, what, one of the things Sarah said that was very interesting to me was it's not about where a plant was originally sourced. It's then about where does it grow best? And so um, one of the things that Gary, you know, because Gary's taken seeds from some places and put them in other places, but what, like helichrysum, for instance, it was growing in other places, but what, where they found it grew the best was in Croatia. So they've got stuff going on there too. Um, okay, let's talk more about purity, uh, purity and transparency. The Young Living used to release their uh, GC reports, that's gas chromatography, that is how they analyze the oils to make sure they have all the constituents in them because they're not gonna send them out to us if they don't. Distilling different times, tenants harvesting, yep. Yep, that's right, Alice. Um, they're not gonna send something out to us that doesn't have all the constituents. So, so they're, every time, they used to release those GC reports. Okay, this is a few years back. And every time they did, there was a drama. And this drama was created by people outside of Young Living, you know, misconstruing the reports, this, that, and the other. And so they don't do it now. Well, guess what? They don't have to do it. There is no law that says they have to do that. They were just doing that because they're a transparent company. They wanted to put all the information out there. You can see that stuff when you go to the farms. They talk about that, but it is confusing. It is serious chemistry. And so, you know, you gotta, you gotta understand chemistry at a high level to really understand those tests and those um, analyzations and, and understand molecular breakdown. But Young Living has 10 chemists with PhDs on staff, and two of them are recognized as two of the top aromatherapy chemists in the world. So, you know, does a little, is a little mom and pop shop able to do that? No, you know, they're, they're absolutely not able to do that. Young Living has grown to the place that it is that they can do that, um, and so they do. Uh, they have 180 years of experience in their analytic scientists today working on their farms. And their areas of expertise are analytical chemistry and chromatography. And those are the methods that they use. Um, and this information, now I haven't listened to this yet, but I'm going to, but you guys can make a note of this. This information is taken from a Young Living podcast on the website. Um, it's episode 12 of Under Why Science Matters, and it's Mike Bush, and he's the head of the science department. And I'm going to tell you what, when you go to convention, and I've heard him speak the last few times, when Mike Bush comes out, the place just is an uproar because the science guy is coming out. And he is so able to talk to where we all get it, we understand it, but on a real scientific level. And and it, that's, that's one of the best things about convention is listening to that guy talk. So if, if you're not planning on going, if you haven't planned on going to convention yet, I really you know, help try to get your people there because <clears throat> it'll light your fire. 
Um, right now, he is heading up studies at the National Institute, Institute of Health in Washington, D.C. Um, so, Young Living, you know, we know what we're doing, right? <laughs> Um, okay, let's just talk about integrity for a minute. So Valor, you know Valor, one of the most favorite oils of all of them. Um, it goes out of stock. And why? Because blue tansy is hard to source. And so two years ago, the Canadian fields were flooded. And so, but they brought that, that plant material in, <clears throat> they got that oil, they distilled it, they tested it. There were eight constituents that needed to be high enough for it to be acceptable. Seven out of the eight constituents were high enough, but one was not high enough. And so YL went without one of their number one oils for a whole year instead of putting, bottling that and sending it to us because they just weren't gonna sell it. And <clears throat> so that, you know, that, that's integrity. I mean, um, and what did they do with that? They put that oil back on the fields to um, settle the dirt and the dust down. They put it on the dirt. Isn't that great? <laughs> so these eight, um, the, and, the, and there, it is an eight point test that they do. These eight point tests are not required by anybody in the United States, not by the government. Um, this is just Gary's standards, and this is from his years of learning in France. In France, they do have standards, and so he's going to go by that and, and more. Um, <clears throat> the only explanation of why Young Living Oils are the best is really probably their distillation process and their just dedication to, it's an art, to doing it at the right time. I mean, there, I, when I was up on the gold retreat, and we're at St. Mary's Farm and there's Melissa. Is that, was that the gold or the silver? I think it's the gold. Anyway, yeah, it's where the Melissa was. Well, there we were told stories from the people that are working in the distillery that he realized at one point, he, he was not getting the yield, the oil yield from the Melissa that he thought he could get. And I think he had a dream. And um, in, in the dream, he got that Melissa does not like to hit the ground. Melissa does not like to be dirty. She's a girl. She's a feminine girl <laughs> and she doesn't like to get dirty. And so from that point on, when they would go out in the field and harvest, you know, they'd harvest and the Melissa would just hit the dirt and then they'd come back and, and gather it up and then, you know, take it over to the distilleries. <clears throat> well, from that point on, he had these big tarps, however they do it, on the ground so the Melissa did not hit <clears throat> the dirt and he got more yield just by doing that and that's another thing about Gary he's incredibly intuitive in incredibly just connected to God and so really uses that and looks to that and what a great example for us but um, the other thing I heard about Melissa was that at one point there were a couple of the workers out in the field um, arguing and while they were harvesting the Melissa and again that yield right there didn't bring back as much and then he found out about this arguing thing and he was just like you know that has to end and it was like he just put this law down that you know to, to his employees you know there's none of that when you're out in the field and we are you're testing and harvesting none of that can happen so you know you got employees telling you these stories and what a great place it is to work. It's, it's really wonderful <laughs> hearing that stuff. Um, okay, let's see, back to where I was. Uh, oh, okay, so when they go to harvest, they don't know when to harvest immediately, but there's a two week window. So they go out there, they have staff, they go out there every hour and they take a clipping, they take it back, they micro distill it, and they look at to see if, if the constituents are where they should be, and they do that every hour. Again, a mom and pop shop, a small place, you know, if they even owned their own farms, this wouldn't have the staff to do that for two weeks, you know? I mean, all kinds of fields all, at all the farms. I mean, it's just not possible. 
So they're looking at the pH, you know, the pH of the soil is going to be different every year. The rain is going to be different every year. The humidity is going to be different every year. That's why there's little differences in the oils every year. It is not like, you know, okay, we're going in a lab and we're going to make, you know, this one thing and it's going to be the same every time you get it. Mm -mm. It's going to be different. So, so they go into the field, they're micro distilling it, they're looking at those constituents and they're looking at them go higher, 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 higher. And when they start to level off, that's when they know they're at the peak of harvest. And that's when it's all hands on deck and everybody's out, they're harvesting, they're bringing that oil in. And so, ooh, I just got goosebumps, you know, <laughs> what, what a deal. So anyway, that's, that's how it all works. And you get to see that up close and personal when you go to the farms. So, you know, you can just go visit anytime. You don't have to wait for a <clears throat> silver retreat or <clears throat> even convention. You know, you can just go and they are happy to see you. I've done it multiple times. When we went to the gold retreat to St. Mary's, a group of us got in a van, like six of us, and we drove up. I think it was an hour or two north to go to the Highland Flats farm. And they're just happy to see us. They're like, oh, sure, we'll take you on a tour. You know, oh, sure, you can get in, in the hot tub with all the blue spruce uh, hydrosol water and, and, you know, or even the warehouse, you know. I, I just dropped by. I didn't even call to make an appointment. And I just thought, well, I want, you know, I said, is it possible to get a tour? Oh, you bet. We'll bring someone down. You can videotape, you know. They're transparent. They want you to come there. They want you to see how all of this happens. You can go help plant. You can go help harvest. All of those opportunities. What a great vacation. So um, they're very transparent. And again, all the, you know, all those employees are just like, they love working there. They love Gary. They love his mission. They love the purity. They're like, Young Living does it the right way. So really fun to see those guys. Um, on the on the testing, they do 24 tests. Okay, so there's an eight point test at the farm, and there's that's at the different farms. Then all oils go to Mona, Utah, and so when they get to Mona, Utah, there's another that same eight point test again in Mona. Then after everything's bottled and labeled, they do a batch test, and again an eight point test. So they are making sure, making sure only the good stuff is going out. Um, so, you know, because of all of these things, you know, when we go talk about like, oh, it's an MLM company. It's like, you know, that just flies out the window. It's just not even an issue anymore. You know, when you start learning all that kind of stuff. All right. So let's talk about the objection to selling. We're not selling guys. I say it all the time, but I'd say it again. We are not selling. We are educating people. Someone asked me just the other day, Oh, do you sell the oils? I'm like, no, I don't sell the oils. <laughs> I educate, I teach classes and um, I get together with people and show them, um, just educate them about it. And I show them how to set up their own account so they can order them. And so, you know, that's, that's just what it is. Um, so what we want to do is uh, learn how to share in a compliant way. Um, and a real easy way to do that is, and what Sarah says, she, she does the three cabinet challenge and she does this in her 101 class. Um, so where she says, all right, go back home and look in three cabinets. You know, you could look under your sink, um, at what you've got under your sink. You could look in your bathroom cabinets and you could look at your laundry room stuff and just turn those bottles over and start reading those labels. What are you looking at? What are those chemicals? And then go to Google and type in dangers of whatever that chemical is and it'll come right up and you'll see pretty quickly why you don't want that thing. Um, I love that. I think that's a great idea. So some people, once they you know, light bulb turns on, they're going to just switch everything out immediately. Other people are going to just, you know, if the light bulb turns on, we're talking about the people that get it. <laughs> um, other people are going to just one bottle at a time. They're going to take it as a slow process because it truly, it is, it can be overwhelming when you all of a sudden go, oh my gosh, everything in my life is, is wrong. <laughs> or not everything in my life, but you know, all the things I have in my house are not good. Um, so, so anyway, we're training people to pay attention to their bodies, to be aware of the chemicals in their life, to live a less toxic life. 
and it is real empowering. You know, that's why I love teaching the classes to see those light bulbs go off and they're just like, oh my gosh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, so, so really, and Sarah says this and she's right, you know, it really is a calling what we're doing here. I mean, because you do have to be passionate about it. Um, and the more you use it, if you're just starting to use these things, but you sort of see the vision, you know, just stick with it because the more you use them, the more passionate you will become. The more you learn, it, it's only going to increase. And then, and then you have this security in knowing that my company, got, they got everything I need here pretty much. You know, I just, I don't have to go searching out for anything. It's all right here. And that's nice. Um, so, so if you'll switch your mindset from I'm selling something to I'm educating, I'm teaching people, then that is really going to help you. And, but don't worry if you don't know everything, we're going to get to that. Um, cause none of us know everything. Um, so one of the things that I say to people also is because gosh, this is such a long, opens a can of worms, but you know, the absence of, sym of symptoms does not mean the presence of health. And that sounds so negative. And I'm like a real optimistic person. So, you know, I'm a half glass, a glass half full person, but you wouldn't have had to say that 50 or a hundred years ago, Be but, but simply because of our world, the, our soil in the United States, the air we breathe, the chemicals in our house, you know, it is a slow creep on what's going on in our bodies with all these chemicals. And we may not have symptoms yet. And so I don't mean to be like, like not speaking words of life. I'm all about speaking words of life, but this is a fact and this is our world today. And so, um, I don't like to be dramatic, but dang it, it's true. <laughs> you know, I don't know what else to say. Um, all right. So let's go back to how do we share the oils successfully? And it's two things. It's passion and it's compassion. And I love bringing it down to those two things. So you have to have passion for the product, you know, or in this whole subject. And the more you use it, the more you will, like I just said, um, you know, if you want to jack that passion up real fast, go to convention, you know, go to any of these live events. Like, um, there's a great one down in Houston road to Royal. Um, when our group meets with the Hopkins, over, it's usually in November and Bartle, or I guess it's in Tulsa, um, Oklahoma city. Oh, we've got a great one coming up. I think it's August one. I think Sarah Harnish. Yeah. And Dr. Minky. Oh, he was amazing. You know, any of these live events, if you can get to those and even just our live, our classes, you know, getting to any of that stuff is really going to increase the passion. Um, and, and then guess what? people see that they sense it <clears throat> and they're attracted to it. It's a magnetic thing. People want to follow people that are excited, that are passionate. Um, oh, it's in October this year. Oh, thanks Alice. I hadn't seen anything on that. Thank you. Um, so, and then, so that's passion. Then compassion is meeting people where they are. Yes. Leaders should go to as many events as possible. Absolutely. And take people with you. Um, but compassion is meeting people where they are. And, um, you know, you might be talking to a granola grass fed, you know, give me all the healthy stuff, mama, or you might be talking to someone who's been doing fast food forever and that's their lifestyle and stress and, you know, medicalized and all that kind of stuff. No judgment. You know, you just are going to walk through that with them step by step as they can do it. And, um, you know, you may feel like you're saying, over and over and over the same things, um, about, you know, gut health or whatever. And, you know, then they're going and doing the opposite of what you said. And then, you know, we'll get, we can't get frustrated with that. We just can't. They are going at the pace they can go and it's all good. <laughs> you know, it's all good. Um, I mean, when I think of the line meeting people where they are, the first thing I always think of is where I was spiritually, you know, before I became a Jesus freak. And I mean, it was, it was Lorenzo and Jennifer talking to me for two years every week. And they, I was asking the questions. They weren't, you know, they weren't, and they were 
they were no judgment. They were just like, you know, you are where you are in your process. So we can't get mad at anybody. We can't be frustrated with anybody. We just have to be like, yeah, okay, let's go. You ready? Let's go. Let's talk. Let's help you. Um, so each of us is going to, each, each person, there's going to be a little niche in what's going to speak to them, what's going to draw them in. You know, it might be um, a diffuser in their home. It might be their pets. You know, some people are more concerned about their pets than they are their own bodies. Uh, it might be a raindrop or it might be Agilis for joint health or it might be, you know, get the stink out of the shoes with the purification. But so you've got to find the place that they can relate. And, and then share from there. And that is when we have to be silent and we have to listen. And that's that whole forming thing. That is a term in network marketing, form, F-O-R-M. Those stand for something. F, and it, and it just helps you remember, you know, when you're, I'm kind of a natural interviewer. I, I ask a lot of questions. <laughs> and so um, I'm there with that PBS documentary background and everything. And it's just kind of who I am. So. So this is kind of generally what does come out, but I like it that it's in that word form. So when you're talking to somebody, ask them about their family. People love to talk about themselves. They want to talk about themselves. Ask them about their family, F, O, ask them about their occupation, R, ask them about what do they do for fun, relaxation. And then M is your message. And then, you know, and, but you know, you just uh, naturally let that happen. Okay. So... Now this is going to address, you know, and I had somebody ask me this one time. It was on my blog. They were, I've been blogging for just whatever, family and stuff. Then all of a sudden I got into the oils and I, and I put a blog up about something. Um, and thank you, Sherry, for putting that on there. Um, and someone was like, well, you sell the oils, so how can I trust you? <laughs> so I'm like, well, you don't trust me. <laughs> so that is all about, you don't have to be the expert. You don't want to be the expert because that's not duplicatable. Um, it's not about what you know. It's about the resources that you can point people to and the experts who've gone before us. So, you know, and Sarah uses the example, you know, does the lady selling you the bread at Panera Bread have to be an expert in baking bread before you're going to buy it? Or does the guy in Barnes and Noble have to be an expert in every book ever written before you're going to buy a book? No, they're going to point you to resources. And that's what we're going to do is point people to tools and resources. Um, you know, you don't have to be a diamond to, to feel like you know everything. You just got to point people to resources. So, and, and it's called third party tools. And that's a term you'll hear in network marketing. And it gives credibility to what you're telling people. And it ensures a duplicatable system. So um, people, people don't need to look at you as the person that's teaching them about the oils and look at your gifts and talents and think, well, I don't have that. No, you just point them to the resources and they're like, oh, okay. Because the whole, the whole thing is how do I answer uh, questions that people have? Hi, Megan. And so you find those resources and your upline helps you with that. And as you read, you know, you'll know more and more, but it, and if you need to ask your upline, where, where do I find this information? Then do that. But we're trying to empower people to do their own research, to be a health detective, right? <laughs> um, don't try to be everything to your team, rely on the experts. And so it is an MLM strategy that's called using third party validation. And so what that looks like, um, is, you know, if someone has a disease question, you can be like, you know, I don't know, but check out pubmed.com and there's tons of studies and, and you know, start your research there. Or if it's like somebody's wanting to do the business, you know, well, I'm just starting out with that, but check out this game plan book. You know, this is a great resource on how to get started. And, um, or, you know, back to this. You know, you want to know about young living and anything about them, it's all right here. You don't have to know everything. Um, French aromatherapy books, same thing. Chemical free home books, you know, there's some hor I love that hormone, how to tra tame a, the dragon within, the all about hor hormones, you know. So all kinds of resources that we can uh, send people to. So we, let's see. And you know, the other thing is you're never going to know it all. 
This is a lifetime of study. Just look at Gary Young. It's been his lifetime of study. He's approaching 70 and um, it's, this has been his life's work. It is a lifetime of study. They don't even know all the stuff about every oil or every constituent in every oil or what all it could even do probably. So, so you can't know it all. So you just have to stop right there and rely on the experts, point people to that. Hey, Allison, great to see you. Um, so let's see. I mean, <laughs> I've been to the farms and Sarah said this too. I've been to three farms and when you get there, you know, I mean, I've been doing this for seven years and I, you get there and you just go, oh my gosh, you know, I feel like I don't know anything. <laughs> and so, yeah, Sherry, you know, we're lifetime learners. We just, we just have to be. And so that's what we're doing. Um, and, he, and even wishing you were an expert, kind of a little bit of a pride thing. So we can just cut that off right there. Um, and it, it, that this is just going to save you frustration. It's going to save you time. It's going to save you stress for thinking, I, I don't know it all. Um, so, all right. Let's see, um, you know, and even having titles, going to care, um, care is a great thing, don't get me wrong, but you know, becoming a certified aromatherapist, it's not necessary. It's passion and compassion. Those are the two things that we talked about earlier. Um, so, um, and even people that do have those certifications are going to have classes that, you know, no show classes or just a couple people show up, which hey, those couple people need to hear what you have to say. So don't ever feel bad about that. Um, but you know, if nobody shows up, well, you just dust yourself off, get, get back up, um, work on some maybe better marketing, work on your next classes and do it again. <laughs> so right, it's like the only people that are not gonna succeed are those that quit. Um, and, and it's also important to remember that people are gonna come to your classes because they trust you you know, for some reason, or maybe they trust a friend that is bringing them to your class, but that's what, it's not going to be because you have some aromatherapy title. Yes, there will always be one person that will stump you, so happy to not know everything. Yes, get comfortable saying, you know, I don't know the answer to that. And you know, in some cases you might go, but I'm going to look that up for you and I'll get back to you. Or in other cases you might go, you know what, Google such and such and you're going to find it because maybe you, maybe you sort of half remember something, things like that. It is okay to say, I don't know. There's too much to know. We live in the information age. Can't know everything. Um, so people don't care what you know until they know that you care. I love that phrase. My husband says that all the time. Um, so release yourself from the fear of having to be perfect and lean on what has been written before. Um, every question that you get has probably been asked before, likely. All right, guys, so that's the end of um, our talk. We're going to talk about the homework right now. You're going to read chapter seven. You're going to do the workbook of chapter seven. It's only one page, but when you get into that workbook, it's like, I don't know, five pages or six pages. But for this, you're only going to do one page. So page 25. Um, watch that scavenger hunt video. I put that on the grow group and watch that pyramid scheme video. I put that on the grow group. And then if you haven't gone to seed to seal.com seed to T O seal S E A L.com. Um, check that out. Just explore that a little bit. So you know what's on there. There's a few neat videos and, and stuff like that. You'll be able to point people to that later. Um, chapter eight homework. So our next, so we're going to meet again. Um, I can't remember, it's Thursday or Friday. I think it's Thursday, but I'll put the meme out. But chapter eight homework is going to be the most homework of the whole book. Just, I'm just giving you a heads up. So the good news is you'll have all the way from Thursday to next Tuesday to do it. So not this, not tonight, but um, the next chapter, chapter eight. So guys, uh, I guess that's all, all I got for you. I'm gonna go watch my daughter do her first formal debate. She's totally nervous. <laughs> so I'm so glad we got to be together. I love seeing your faces and your comments on there. And this is really fun. If we can't be together in person, at least we get to be together like this. 
So I love you guys so much. And did you get your worksheets done? If you didn't, you know, they're in the files here. If you need to um, print it out again, you know, print out 10. That's what I did. And then I just stuck them in my binder. Thank you, Alice. Thank you, Sherry. Um, and, and just write those out. You know, it's just good to write it out. Um, no matter what happened last month, just do it again. You know, the, it's biblical to write it out. All right. Love you guys, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.